As games go, this is big. This is huge. This is massive. Rangers will go seven points clear with two games in hand if they win. Surely there would be no way back for Celtic from there. Walter Smith has only lost seven out of 38 Old Firm matches. A remarkable record. He's won his last six. Coming second in Glasgow means coming last. Winning is everything, losing is nothing. And we've had a full start, but the real thing is upon us. Celtic and Rangers are at loggerheads again. It's win or bust for Celtic. Sasa Papac. Gary Caldwell is underneath that. Robson charging into Christian Daly, who's less than impressed, and reacts. No, he's not impressed. Normally very calm, Christian Daly. He wasn't happy with this, you can see why. Barry Robson straight in there, and he does come across with his right elbow. And Christian Daly did not enjoy that. Barry Robson signalling his intent against the club where he actually started his career. It's frantic, it's frenzied, and we've only had 50 seconds. Well, that is a message, and I think, from a Celtic point of view, they really have to try and start quickly. And for me, treat this like a European night and go at it for the first 20 minutes. Lee McCulloch once again up against Andreas Hinkle. And they had a few battles the last time these two teams met not so long ago. It's Barry Ferguson's 35th Old Firm game. McCulloch is his target. Mostly watched by Hinkle and Caldwell. Cleared by Nakamura. McDonald, it's popped off his head, and now Stephen Davis for Stephen Whittaker. Carlos Cuela up towards Darcyville, McManus in front of him. Darcyville has it though, and a corner. Well, quite clearly, Walter Smith. Knew that Celtic's game plan would be to start quickly, and he's decided that's just what Rangers are going to do. Safe to say, Barry Ferguson is not getting much of a welcome in that corner. Ferguson's corner, and Christian Daly flicked it on after McCulloch had left it. Quite interesting the way the Rangers players attack this one. McCulloch towards the front post area. The three bigger lads in behind, waiting for it. Celtic have lost the last four Old Firm games without scoring. If they don't stop the rot tonight, the game is up, the race is over. Quayla will get a free kick off Vinegar and Hesselik. I think the thing is that Celtic do need to score early in this one, Rangers don't, don't actually need to score at all, I'm quite happy with a 0-0 here. The difficulty for Celtic is that Rangers don't concede goals early, only once so far in the SPL this season. Inside 20 minutes, and I think that Celtic will be looking for that, we will trying to get that goal, get themselves settled in. And I also think as well, as far as a, a nerves point of view, have lost four times to Rangers recently. They want to settle themselves down. Robson, his first all firm start. He was caught by McCulloch, but Kenny Clark happy to let Celtic get on with it. McDonald, McGeady. 
David Weir's clearance goes only to Paul Hartley. Hinkle having to track back. Venegor and Hesseling, his target. Also watched by Coelar. And Venegor and Hesseling thought he was fouled. That's an adoshable there as well. He felt he was held back from Caldwell. A little look across at the referee. Can we give and go there with McCullough? McGeady. Promising traps. They had some joy against Warford last time out. Tapach. Keeping an eye on Robson. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why Watersmith favoured Whitaker on that right-hand side, because it's virtually two right-backs that McGeady's playing against, with Broadfoot in there as well. Nakamura, who is due a decent old firm game. McGeady, running away from Whittaker, and now he's up against Broadfoot. Maybe McGeady looking to make it happen, but he might need some help. And Broadfoot has stepped in. Darshville. Barry Ferguson is making a dart through the middle. Darshville stumbles. That will be a problem if you allow Darshville to drop off and then get turned on you, as McManus did there. We'll give you a problem all night. Maybe not quite for 90 minutes, but certainly 60 or 70 of them. by Nagini for McDonald. Nagini takes over again. Whittaker quickly upon it. And that will be a common theme for sure. It's going to be one night though where Nagini will need help. You have to look at players like Nakamura to come in as well with great delivery, work rate. An attempt at least to get in behind Rangers. Lee Naylor's long throw, Vinegar and Hesseling flicked it on. There wasn't much contact from Weir, but there was from McCulloch. Caldwell. Nakamura, Hinkle in close attendance, but it's intercepted by Stephen Davis. Darshville chasing this, Paul Hartley going with him. Darshville powerful, but Hartley having held it. Well, that's just why Hartley's in there. He reads the situation very well. Robson will get a free kick really. Will he? Yes, he will. Kenny Clark thought about playing the advantage. Kellogg was all over him. Celtic think they are playing the advantage, but they're not. The Rangers are so well drilled like this. As soon as someone like McCulloch breaks free and tries to press, everyone drops off in midfield and they become a solid four again. The back line are marshalling the troops, getting them pushed up. Rangers do not have a great recent record here. They've only scored one goal in their last five visits to Celtic Park. That was Hugo Ekiolt's winner last season. Vinegar and Hesseling helping that on to McGeady. Cut out by Quayla, as so much has been this season. Naylor. Vinegar and Hesseling kept in check by Papac. McCulloch charges in and he will get a free kick off Big Yang. Finner of Hesley trying to press high up the park, but he does catch McCullough. Celtic Park wrestling with passion and plenty of it. Caldwell. Naylor. Bikini outside of him. They will want him on the ball along. Ferguson.
position. Intervening. McGeady very closely watched once again by Whitaker and Broadfoot. Wise move. Yeah, it's not going to be easy for McGeady tonight. Both those players have pace and strength. And very used to defensive qualities. Pop out. He's found Whitaker, and he's found Broadfoot. And there could be a Rangers raid. Then again, Naylor pings back to Nakamura. Hinkle. Nakamura and Fenigora Hesselink is onside. McGregor got a whack as he dealt with it. But that was a bit of a let off for Rangers. McGregor's hurt. The Celtic fans raising the decibels inside this spectacular arena. They were a little bit unlucky in the last old home game with Ibrox. Celtic controlled much of the first half before going behind. Oh, it's a lovely ball. You can see Jan Federoff Hessen beating the offside trap. But it's that point there. He hasn't got quick enough feet. He looks a bit sluggish. It's his first touch. He's a mile off, really. And at this point, I think it's the free kick. Comes right across McGregor. Well, that is a real chance, though. If the striker gets a touch on it, he gets turned. He'll get a strike, but I think he got that all wrong. McGinney's away. Second chance, hint of handball. And McGinney unable to keep that in, it's a goal kick. It has come downstairs already. Maybe just the ease at which McGeady's getting on the ball on that left-hand side, but as soon as he does get on the ball, the Celtic midfield have to do something in order to support him, because with two against one, he's quite often going to run out of steam. McDonald. The colour grows with Robson. Those two together again. As they were in the opening seconds. McGeady. A sense of anticipation amongst the Celtic fans whenever Aidan McGeady is on the ball. And no wonder after the season he's had. Celtic dominant in the early exchanges. I don't think that really bothers Rangers too much, to be honest. There's been no real chances created as yet. Just that one for Jan Fenninger of Hessling, which he, he didn't take. Kraylar was virtually glued to Jan Venegora Hesseling. It's come off Hartley's chest. I think part of the Rangers game plan will be to frustrate Celtic, to allow them to come on to them and then maybe try and get them on a the break, but certainly not initially, they don't have to. They'll try and stay solid and they won't mind too much if the ball goes wide as long as it doesn't come in with dangerous delivery. Celtic have failed to score in their last three home games. They've never in their history gone four games without scoring here. Naylor. McGinney mugged by Broadfoot. win for Celtic they run away from Hartley and uh, he caught McCulloch Kenny Clark wants a word well, it's a sort of night where there's no holding back from tackles unfortunately for Hartley he was forced into that one to a ball from Naylor 
not quite sure where he's caught, but you can see the pain in his face, McCullough. The first yellow card on Derby Day in Glasgow. There'll probably be one or two more. Can't we done well to get to 14 minutes before we have one. Lee McCulloch in agony. There's been a few balls already played by Celtic that have just not found their mark. I think they're a little bit anxious. They're trying to overdo it a little bit, the home side. On that occasion, Hartley followed through and just caught McCulloch on the right ankle, I think. Plenty of attacking options on the bench for Rangers, if required. Boyd and Novo and Naismith and Kuzan. As far as changes are concerned, Rangers certainly win that battle if they have to make them. From a forward-thinking point of view, but real options on the bench. So Paul Hartley has to be wary which is easier said than done in a game like this. There hasn't actually been a red card in the last nine, old Furman Candace. Maybe you're right, Ian, that will be problematic for him. Quite often he'll have to make that last-ditch tackle. Well, that's great, that. it's actually a corner. Well, I've been used and baffled. He's not having that. Let's we'll see if he's right. Shuffle and ball out. Oh, he's going to touch it. A corner for Celtic. Eight shots for Celtic. Nakamura takes it. A brushed off Papac. Here's Lee Naylor. Ready to return it, Stephen McManus is still in there. The drops kindly for Christian Daly, to Whitaker challenge McManus. McGeady, away from Daly superbly. Good ball, I think. You can see quite clearly how Rangers are overcompensating on their right-hand side. So far in the first 17 minutes, it's basically a one against 11 with McGeady down that left. I think that Celtic definitely need to change the point of attack. Nakamura inviting. McCulloch had to uh, sort it out. And that's another corner. And it's a good spell for Celtic, this. It's a good spell. It's a decent ball in as well, but Rangers are physical and nearly do have height. It's Barry Robson then to whip it in. And it's met by Papac, and he'll get the chance to do the same again, Robson. Nakamura wants a short one, actually, but Robson... Hadn't noticed him, and well, Papas now has. Robson tries again, and is it going in? Papas has to knock it behind again after Caldwell has caused chaos. Oh, it's a great ball, and it's got real pace as well. Caldwell looking at the back post, and Whitaker just gets the header up in the air to anywhere. Rangers on the rack, under the cosh, but can Celtic make one of these corners count? And it would count so very much. Once more, Robson sent it in, and it's going to be yet another corner. Very important spell for both sides now. Rangers need to try and keep this tight. Very difficult, though, when they're putting balls like that in Celtic. Great header away from Quayla. Rangers weather this Celtic storm. Another corner, Nakamura this time. 
knocked away by McCulloch and helped on his way by Ferguson and sighs of relief for Rangers as they finally dig it out. Well, that is why Rangers are so difficult to beat. Defensively, enormously strong. Queer, Weir, always putting their bodies on the line. start from Celtic and again they have to win to even have a chance of taking the title race further Nakamura his first old form goal and typically it's a beauty Celtic rise to the old form occasion at last finish this is great first touch he gets it out of his feet and look at the bend and the dip on that one he's right through it and just look how much that moves away from McGregor he thinks it's going to his left but look at it on the end it's a fantastic strike bang on the 20 minutes mark and after all that pressure it's paid off Nakamura came inside a little bit and that paid dividends but he was due a goal against Rangers and he was due a performance against Rangers. He is delivering. Shumsky Nakamura has ended Celtic's dismal run of Glasgow derbies without scoring. And that has been a difference in Nakamura of late, certainly in the Motherwell game. He comes inside a little bit, he doesn't hug the sideline anymore. He tries to get himself a little bit more involved. And boy, did he get himself involved there. McGeady chasing this. And Quaylar's giving away another corner. And Celtic are pummeling their Glasgow rivals. Oh, it's not often you say this, but Rangers are on the rack. Moore Smith in the stand. And they've seen it all. And quite plain to see in the first 20 minutes. You see there, 6-1, the corners to the home side. Pretty much sums up possession so far. The goal scorer looking to turn provider. Nakamura's corner. And it's Melo who drilled it back in. And McDonald struggling with it. Got the one behind you. touch as well because as soon as it gets out from under his feet he doesn't have to think about it anymore he has a wee look up and then he gets his head down and he gets right through the ball fantastic strike and because he takes it so early it gives McGregor no chance the man from Japan comes good on Derby Day in Glasgow just when Celtic needed him to It's all very well for Rangers coming and sitting in a little bit. The game plan is not to lose a goal early on. And as I said earlier, they don't generally lose goals early in matches the away side. But they have done tonight. And it'll be interesting to see how that changes them. Do they open up a little bit more or do they just wait? David Weir takes it, aimed towards Lee McCulloch, it's won by McManus. Stephen Davis, McManus and Robson almost in each other's way, here's Lee McCulloch. And Lee Naylor cut across him, Scott McDonald handball, handball. Caldwell's up far too early. He managed to get that one out of the referee for me. See how early he goes up. He's never going to be there in time for the ball arriving. 
Well, the first goal is vital in any game, but especially in old firm games. Only once in the last 56 league derbies has the team that scored first lost. Magidi makes some room, cut out by Daly. Rangers pretty much swamped in the opening quarter of this titanic tussle. Space so far for Rangers. Celtic looking hungry, very, very hungry, but then they have no choice. They could actually be top of the table by the weekend, although Rangers would then have three games in hand. One way to go in this one, and here's Stephen Davis. He's way off target though, unlike. Nakamura. Yeah, Ranger just managed to push out a little bit. The Celtic will just try for the next five, ten minutes or so. Batting down the hatches a little bit. Broadfoot, Whitaker, Ferguson, and Whitaker and Broadfoot both chasing this. It was kept in by Broadfoot. The Lyser was nearly uh, <laughs> bowled over there. John Gilmore. Broadfoot, yeah, right in there. No hanging around, and the assistant referee, a little bit weary. Well, you would be, wouldn't you? Carlos Coelho will need that. He's sent it straight back in the direction of McManus, who will let it go for the throw. Celtic found some form at just the right time at the weekend. Trancing Motherwell, but that was only their second win in eight games. They have the lead against Rangers here, thanks to a special strike from a special player. Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, we did see before the match that both Nakamura and Magidi were important, but maybe more so Nakamura because over the last few matches he hasn't quite been in form, although Magidi's been trying his best to spark his side into life. But it's been the opposite on this occasion. Naylor. Naylor again. Scott McDonald. Another corner. I think that's got to be the biggest worry for Walter Smith is the, the time that the Celtic midfield are being afforded on the ball to pick out passes, whether they're going to go wide or more central in a striker. The Rangers midfield have to get closer. They've got a man over in there. It shouldn't be happening. Celtic's seventh corner. And a standing evasion for the man who goes to take it. The goal scorer. from Nakamura and the commanding figure there was David Weir Nakamura he's giving Whitaker the run around big time Hartley Rangers charge out 
Inkle there has skipped past Papach, and he's gone past McCulloch, but Papach has come back for more. Here is Hartley, it was a slight doubt for the leg strain. But with no Scott Brown in there, they needed him. McDonald, Robson, McGinney was involved in this move too. And that's a strong, forceful challenge from Quayla. That's a brilliant tackle. He times it so well, because if Robson gets past him, he's on his favoured left foot, takes the whole of the ball. Nado's cross, away by McCulloch. McGinney. Ferguson. Closes in on McGinney too. And ball sat against Darsfield, although mostly from the fans. And Davis now is racing away, but there's nobody who's kept up until now. Here's Christian Daly, of all people. Trust him to keep up one of the fittest players around despite his advancing years. Papac, Ferguson, Davis, and Papac had actually moved into the box. That was uh, Whitaker. Rather Broadfoot lunging in, and he's got a yellow card. We're both just going for it here. Broadfoot, as you can see, nowhere near the ball really. It's not particularly dangerous because he keeps his foot out of it. It's more his shin. He still catches McGeady. Broadfoot joins Hartley in the book. Well, he'd love to be out there playing. Now part of Gordon Strachan's coaching staff. And he would have been in the face of every Celtic player in that dressing room before this game. Celtic are very much in Rangers' faces now. Scott McDonald. Christian Daly. Another reckless challenge. McDonald had lost the ball. Yeah, it all stems from not being able to hold it up. Not for the first time in this match. Very important for the strikers. Also for Darcheville, maybe even more so for him. To be able to just hold it in and allow his midfielder to support. McGregor launching it towards McCulloch. Gary Colwell rises. Inkle under pressure from Darshville, it's a Rangers throw. Papach goes short in the end, and promptly gets it back from Davis. Papach in, it's away by Naylor. McGeady. Oh, it's been a totally commanding half an hour, but you know what? Rangers are nowhere near out of this one. Scott McDonald is lurking with a free kick, it's going to go Rangers' way. I think Celtic will know. We've got a lot of work to do to get the three points here tonight. Davis. The race for the English title continues at the weekend as Manchester United go to Blackburn and we'll be there with them from four o'clock Saturday, Satanta Sports 1. Oh, Hartley with a mistake. 
which almost let in Whitaker. Whitaker. Nakamura for Hinkle. Carlos Crela always looked the favourite ahead of Venegor and Hesselin. Ferguson needs to rally Rangers. Papat. Darcheville. Oh, that's loose. Terrible. McDonald pounces on it. And Robson and Venegor and Hesselink are in the box. McDonald tried to catch out McGregor in his near post. I'm not sure what he's trying here. Is it a cross? Is it a shot? In the end, it didn't really matter. Skips in the channel. And from this point, you're thinking he could even cut it back to McGeady, but I think he's just going across goal as hard as he can, hoping that Jan Federoff Heslin could get there. Or is he being audacious? Maybe I wouldn't put it past him. Celtic's corner count increases. And Celtic score again. Barry Robson whips it in, and McGregor got something on it. It was very crowded in there. And now Darsfield's got a free kick off Hartley. Those are killer deliveries from by Robson. Great to have Robson and Nakamura both in your side. The kick against McCulloch and in favour of Thorwell. I think for all Celtic's possession, they've only really created a couple of chances. You could even call Nakamura's goal a chance. Well, McCulloch getting a little ticking off. Against that left elbow in similar fashion to Barry Robson's earlier on. I don't even know if you can call Nakamura's goal a chance. 25 yards out, just a phenomenal strike. Gordon Strachan needs to end his Walter Smith hoodoo. McDonald, Naylor, and McGregor having to uh, step back. Alan McGregor kept four successive clean sheets against Celtic. First Rangers keeper to do that. And then along came Nakamura. Davis for Darsville. McCulloch takes over, free kick against McCulloch again. And for Hartley. And they're taking it quick. McGeady. Nakamura. And Barry Robson didn't see that coming. He swept the awards board last season in Scottish football. Been a bit quieter this season, was out for a time injured. I think a lot of football caught up with him. Rangers unbeaten in 27 domestic matches since the end of October. Celtic are challenging that unbeaten run, and they hope they'll still be challenging for the title. McGeady hurdling Broadfoot. into the Glasgow sky by McManus. David Weir jostling with Vinegar Hesseling that time. Stephen Whitaker. Whitaker gets popped down and McGeady gets stuck in. Hartley. Ferguson waiting to pounce but Celtic calm, composed, controlled. Robson 
for Caldwell. I can see that Celtic have just passed the ball better than Rangers in this first half. But I don't think the away side will be too disillusioned, only one down, having not really started yet in this game. They will create chances, Rangers. Stephen Davis now, Darcheville. Celtic a little short on numbers at the moment. Darcheville, though. That's in horribly wrong. Yeah, and he's taken a little bit of stick from McCulloch and Davis, who'd made the long run there to support him. You can see just inside. But he's got that lone battle up front, and I think he feels that when he gets sight of goal, he's going to attempt it. Lee Naylor is hurt. Five minutes of the first half remaining. So some concern for Gordon Strachan, who will be particularly pleased at the way his team have gone around their business today. They look like a side who know they have to win. Walter Smith exchanging words with the legend that is Ali McCoyst. Well, it's not surprising that it took something as special as this to break down a fantastic Rangers defence. And that is really special. So much movement on it. Virtually impossible for McGregor to track it. The sweetest of sweet strikes from Shinsuke Nakamura. And it looks like it'll be all right. slot Quaylar Whitaker casual from Quaylar Rangers not getting much of a look in Caldwell, certainly one of Gordon Strachan's favourite players. Offside, it won't, uh, you won't be surprised to hear. Scott McDonald. Well, McDonald tries to bend his run, maybe not quite enough. Arguing the point. fast approaching and Rangers need to regroup and this game does have a similarity to the 3-0 earlier in the season the Rangers won this time round up Celtic that looked the more determined side the team that won it the most but I'm sure Walter Smith at half time will have something to say about that the Giants of Glasgow slugging it out again there's another one to come, a week on Sunday. A slip from Naylor has let in Whitaker. Darshville ahead of him. And now it is John Claude Darshville! And McManus diverted it wide. He's got an own goal at the weekend. And he must have thought there might have been another one there. I just thought that Whitaker could have released this earlier. At that point there, 
for Darcheville and then he waits but then it opens up again McManus caught the wrong side for one second I thought it was going to be another own goal for McManus like he scored against Motherwell but that's the problem with Darcheville he can't leave him for a second he's so mobile I think he should have got a better shot off though well, they're waiting for Darcheville to get his boot back on Rangers scored on the stroke of half time in the last half home game Come on, get your boots on. Rangers take it anyway. And McCulloch. Quite out of the foul. On Nakamura. And the 45 minutes are almost up. Darsville has a world record attempt at uh, the longest time to put a boot back up. It's going to be one minute added on in what has been, as usual, an absorbing first half between Glasgow and Scotland's big two. You don't often say this about Gordon Strachey when it involves Walter Smith, but it's all going to plan so far. Nagidi, Benigora Hesselink, and McDonald, he's onside. Robson looking to maintain Celtic's interest in this move. Nakamura supporting. Hinkle on his left foot. Wasn't quite as good as the one that brought out that save from McGregor in the last match. In fact, nowhere near as good. It is half time. It's so fast and frantic in these games, you need someone who can pull something out of nothing. And Celtic have that someone in Shumsky Nakamura. Out of the blue, against the Blues. This was moving. It was really moving. A spectacular strike from a man who was due to do that in an old firm game. Celtic desperate to win, and they have the lead. It's Celtic 1, Rangers 0. The Kalzaghi fight in Las Vegas. We have the start of the six-week 2020 cricket series in India, which features most of the world's top players, and it begins Friday, 3.20, Satanta Sports 1. A couple of changes right at the start of the second half. Nacho Novo will replace uh, Kurt Broadfoot, who picked up a booking in the first half, presumably Whitaker to right back, Novo right side of midfield. And Celtic will make an enforced change with Lee Naylor having picked up a back injury in that first half, and Mark Wilson will replace him. But the Celtic fans, in good voice, their team are very much in charge of this third old firm match of the season. 1 0 up. Shunsky Nakamura has scored the goal. Terry Butcher and Craig Burley with me in the studio. What do you make of that Rangers change, Terry? Well, you can either play Novo up front with Darsfield or Novo goes out to the right-hand side, Whitaker goes to right back and the system doesn't change the Rangers, but it's when Walter does change the system. Perhaps he's going to change it now, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But he's got to make a change sooner rather than later because at this moment, Celtic are cruising to victory. Interestingly, Rob, Rangers are out there, uh, no Celtic yet. And uh, I think from the Celtic point of view and the Celtic fans, the Celtic manager, the players' mindset is that second goal. Because surely we're not going to see as poor a performance in the second half as we did in the first from Rangers. That show was left on his own. Weir and Queller had lots of de defending to do. Uh, McCulloch with a diagonal ball, didn't get that into play. And it was pretty poor from him. Celtic were by far the better side. But as I say, they need that second goal to kill the game off. Yeah, Gordon Strachan knows well, 1-0 is a fragile advantage no matter how much of the game you have. That's the scoreline halfway through as Mark Wilson uh, comes into the action as Lee Naylor's replacement. Back to our commentary team, Scott Booth and Ian Cocker. Here's Rob. Well, Celtic fully deserving of their lead. Rangers squumped in that first half. But in Nacho Novo, they have a man who rather relishes these occasions. He scored twice against Celtic at Ibrox back in October.
Celtic a goal to the good. Forty-five more minutes of old firm frenzy to come. Ferguson, sharp to get to that. Here's Nacho Novo. And it didn't take him too long to get involved. Well, he is involved on that right-hand side and not up front alongside Darcheville. Certainly initially, he'll just stick out to that right flank and see how it goes. Here's Hinkle. Quite an interesting battle on the right for Rangers with Novo against Wilson, who's not played that many games now for Celtic this season. You know how sharp Nacho Novo can be. Mark Wilson has had an injury stricken couple of years at Celtic. He did make a surprise start in the new camp, but hasn't figured too often this season. Nina suffered that back injury in the first half, unable to continue. Darshville, and he's got a free kick off Gary Caldwell. The Rangers seeking to respond early in the second half to a wonder goal from Shunsky Nakamura that has given Celtic an all firm advantage. Certainly a great opportunity early in the second half to put a decent delivery in. It is Davis to deliver, but it's safely collected by Otto Boritz. And not only that, he's put Aidan McGeady away. Scott McDonald. He's got away from Papac. Goal kick. It was good defending in the end from Papac. That may be the problem for Rangers on that Celtic left-hand side now that Whitaker's further back and Broadfoot is off. Novo might get caught a little bit further forward and that might just give Aidan McGeady some extra room. Rangers are going to have to do something they haven't done very often lately, score at Celtic Park. Only four goals in their last 12 visits here. And they lost nine of those 12. Stephen Whitaker has switched to right back, where we often saw him for hips. Here's Papac. Davis. Ferguson, McCulloch. Barry Robson putting himself about to great effect. Here is Wilson. McGeady. Shadowed by Novo. Sees him off. McGeady turning it on. Wilson. Met by Weir, but it comes to Hartley. Into the path of Nakamura. Hinkle overlapping. Davis trying to close down Nakamura. He has got the better of him. Davis eventually lost his way, but he has made a major impacts of joining on loan from Fulham who got supporting Rangers Nagidi Wilson McDonald Barry Robson waiting McDonald wants a goal though and Barry Robson saying why didn't you team me up well that's just lovely football from Celtic from right to left, spraying the passes around now. McGeady highly involved, Wilson already involved in the match. 
And McDonald has bought himself a yard or two. I'm sure the Celtic manager will be happy the way his team has started in this second half, quite similar to the first with the passing. McGinney has to evade Novo. Caldwell. Carlos Quayla. Fancy a bit of that, especially up against McDonald. Robson. A Rangers player as a boy. Christian Daly is caught him. Well, it isn't often you see this, but the Rangers midfield just being bossed around at the moment. Barry Robson, Ed McGeady, Hartley just sitting there. Nakamura coming into it as well. They're just in control. A retribution from Daly there after he was clattered into in the opening minute. That's a decent cross. And McGeady trying to get to it. And there's some delivery from Hancock. And Jan Venegor and Hesseling gets a yellow card for that rather crude challenge. Extremely crude. We knew it was coming. Well deserved. Miller was away. He slides out here, he's never going to get the ball. The third yellow card that Nick Clark has brandished today, but uh, the recipient of one of them, Kurt Crawford, is no longer on the field. Christian Daly's free kick aimed towards Weir. Colwell and Vinegar and Hesseling were both keeping an eye on him. Papac returns it. Down by Wilson for Magidi. Daly. Not much room to manoeuvre on Derby Day in Glasgow. And certainly from the home side, did a great job of pressing Rangers midfield. We're not going to at any time on the ball at all. I think what Rangers have done to try and get men closer to Darcyville is they've pushed Novo up slightly and they've also pushed McCulloch up on the other side, just a little bit closer to the striker. Darcyville. He's probably hoping for a corner out of that, but it wasn't forthcoming. Lee McCullough, Davis, and Caldwell's going to take no chances, Boric just coming out, but he knew that McCulloch was right behind him. Papach, but Manus clears, and it's landed at the feet of Aidan McGeady. Daly takes over, and that's going to be a Rangers free kick. There might have been one earlier. Well, referee just waiting to see how it's all going to turn out. And uh, Barry Robson has said something, and he's being warned for that show of dissent rather than for anything else. The game has been refereed well so far. A few late tackles, nothing too untoward, though. It's been all good stuff. It's Whitaker to take this one. Christian Bailey was crowded out. Now McGeady, Celtic. I've got a few options here. That's not one of them, though. Daly. Away by Hinkle, but only to Papac. Darcyville. Hinkle, tidy. Robson having to help that on his way. Christian Daly. Will it fair? Whitaker now for Nacho Novo. And he's in some space. Isn't that just typical of Nacho Novo? 
Rangers respond, and that is a crushing blow for Celtic's title hopes. And it's a familiar scorer against them. Oh, this is just spectacular. It really is. Nachanovo gets a sniff at it. It's a lovely ball played through, but just look how much work he's got to do. Touch and hit right across Boric. The perfect position. Boric's angle's not quite right. He leaves too much of a space there. And that's enough of a space for Nachanovo to get right through the ball. Perfect technique. Right on the top of it. Down in the ground. So difficult for a goalkeeper. It's his first sniff at goal. And what a substitution. Top class. Well, the, uh, there's a yellow card flashed at the uh, dugout there in the aftermath of that goal. And uh, we think it was flashed at Stephen Naismith. We'll find out more about that in a moment. But the important thing for Rangers is that they are level. And Nacho Novo has now got 50 goals for Rangers and six of them have come against Celtic. And you know something, eh? what a difference a sub makes. Novo, on the end of that one, gets the goal back. And for me, it's Mark Wilson was at fault. At left back, he thought he could win it, he stepped out and he just left Novo in acres of space. Stephen Naismith, who is a sub, got a yellow card for running on the pitch to celebrate that goal. <laughs> a yellow card for a sub can only happen in an old firm game. Whitaker, Davis, and that's slipped away from Nova. We have seen two fabulous finishes tonight from Nakamura and Novo. Well, and here is Scott McDonald, and there's a free kick being given. A bit of shirt tugging, I think, in the build-up. Alan McGregor seems to be struggling. Well, this could be very bad news for Rangers if that's a twist or something. It might just have been when he went to the front post there to make that save from McDonald, he had to get down quickly it was a superb save he might just have twisted his left ankle it's a lovely ball through it's a wee tug from Jan Finner of Hesselink and just then maybe his left ankle got trapped underneath his body as he went to the front post area I think that's what it was we'll just see it here, it's a great strike from McDonald, volley hit, and just there, I think his body collapsed and top full weight on that ankle. He's still able to kick the ball, but he is clearly toiling a little, and Rangers will certainly want him fit for what should be a remarkable run in as they chase four trophies. Unfortunate, really, not to be nominated for the Scottish TFA Player of the Year award. Goalkeepers don't usually get a look in, mind you, do they? Although David James did in England. Whitaker. The old firm don't do draws very often. Plenty of time for this scoreline to change. Anything can happen, and it usually does. On Derby Day in this city. Daly. Darcyville. Ferguson. Gary Corbell has seen that coming. Whitaker. Sidestep McGeady. He's run into Wilson, Ferguson, Novo, disappointing, but Rangers fans will let him off that one, here's why.
Well, just prior to the goal, the challenge from Daly on McDonald. The Celtic fans were looking for a free kick for. But just eight seconds later, this happened. Absolutely clinical from Nacho Novo. He is a big time player. That's certainly a big time goal. Whitaker. Ferguson. And it's, it's Tapachu's to his left. Christian Daly. Stephen Davis. Tracked by Hartley, and uh, Davis thought that Tapach was still where he was initially. Alan McGregor has been receiving a little bit of treatment for that ankle problem. It uh, could be tested again here with a big kick. What a big change that was from Walter Smith getting the over on. I don't think Whitaker had it been Broadfoot playing right back would have been as far up the park as Nacho Nova was when he received that pass. Certainly couldn't have finished it any better, although we know that Whitaker can do that. Whitaker's challenge was timely and tasty. Novo. Ferguson. Hartley closes the door. Hartley. And Ferguson being watched today by the Scotland manager George Burley. Never one to miss these occasions. And Gordon Smith alongside him. Played a few of these. Hinkle. Nakamura. Barry Robson. Christian Daly thought he wasn't uh, able to shoot. McGeady has lost it to the always tenacious and ever popular Novo. You can see what a difference that's made. Obviously, Walter Smith in the first half watching the game from the stand. He saw that his midfield just weren't getting close enough to Celtic's midfield. He weren't up the park enough, weren't close enough to Darcheville. Craig Burley mentioned that at half-time, and that's been a big difference. Just able to close down the home side that bit quicker. Celtic had it pretty much their own way in the first half, it was never likely to be a similar story, I guess, in the second. But they need to pick themselves up and dust themselves down and have another go for a goal. Wilson. Hartley. Nakamura. He floated it beautifully to Hinkle. And Venegor of Hesseling knocks it wide. Well, I think Jan Venegor of Hesseling thinks he gets a nudge here from Quayla. It's a great ball in. Just how much contact is that? It's a lovely ball from Hinkle across. And you can see there, there is a touch, but I think it's after. Jan Fenegor gets his touch. That goal from Nacho Nova, by the way, only the fifth that Celtic have conceded in the SPL here this season. They won't want to concede again. And Nacho Nova securing a free kick as Celtic's frustrations increase. It's an engrossing match now. You can see that it's going to be in that midfield area. Just who will get the upper hand over the next 25 minutes or so. Clear by McManus. Whitaker. Robson hacking that in Pampach's direction. McCullough. Papach. Nakamura. Can't 
Carlos Cuela. Commanding figure all season until that particular moment. He's given Venegora Hesselink a sniff. And it's just a throw. There's nothing wrong with the tackle. What will happen next at Celtic Park? All firm games, often a tale of the unexpected. Well, it is obvious that Celtic aren't moving the ball as freely anymore. And at 1 1, it certainly suits Rangers. It's up to the home side to take it back to them again. Celtic were knocked out of both cup competitions on their own ground this season. Rangers now want to knock them out of the title race. Barry Robson latches onto that though. He could put Hinkle in. He has. Hinkle with a bit of time. Robson! Benigor and Hesseling. And a great challenge from Carlos Cuellar to snuff out that threat. Hinkle. Caldwell, dispatched by David Weir, and here's Darterville. The old firm locked together at 1-1. Hidden McGeady. Getting Whittaker plenty to think about, but he's lifted it over Alan McGregor, who's still struggling. He's still struggling. Yeah, he is. Just a few steps back towards goal there for McGregor with McGiddy's ball. And he was hobbling. Nacho Nova, you can see here, Mark Wilson. He banks on getting this one. Doesn't quite make the pass, though, and then he's out of position. And from then on, it's all about Nacho Novo. There's only one place you can put that. His 13th goal of the season, proving rather unlucky for Celtic. Two top draw goals in a top draw contest. This side, Scott McDonald. A quarter of this enthralling encounter remaining. Well, we thought at half-time it was up to Walter Smith to make a change, and he did do that. And I think now, give or take five, ten minutes, it'll be down to Gordon Strachan. What will he do? I'm sure we'll see Samaras sooner rather than later. Wilson, Robson, Stephen Davis inside his own box making a telling contribution as he has done since the day he arrived at the club he supported as a boy. Going short in the end to McDonald. Venegora Hesseling. Nakamura. Nakamura! And handball! Penalty and a red card coming out here! It's a red card for Carlos Cuellar! It's a penalty for Celtic on a night of high drama! That was a lovely ball found its way, it's Nakamura, and is that going in? Yes it is, and that's why Cuella does what he does, but has he handed this match to Celtic? He certainly handled the ball, he's had a great season, and he made that decision, did he get it wrong? Cuella takes the long walk, and what a massive moment this is, for Scott McDonald and for Celtic. You 
can fill the tension. Scott McDonald. It's saved by Alan McGregor. And McGregor's sensational season just goes on and on, even though he's hobbling, even though he's injured. He's foiled McDonald. Well, what a drama. That is a great save. He just does enough to tip it on the post. Scott McDonald's hoping he'd go the wrong way. He didn't. That pretty much sums up his season. Justice was not done. It stays 1-1, but hang on, here's Menegora Hesseling. We nearly sneaked that through to Magidi. Well, that's what I said. Was it a gamble worth taking for Cuellar? Because that ball was going in. At the moment, that still hangs in the balance. But from this angle, we can see it is wide, but he virtually shows McGregor where he's going. But McGregor still got a lot to do. And let's not forget, he has got a problem with that left ankle, which makes that save even better. Celtic deflated, McGregor grimacing every time he kicks it. And I'm surprised they're not letting uh, someone else take the goal kicks. No surprise that Georgios Samaras is going to come on for Gordon Strachan. More than capable of nicking a goal, and Celtic so urgently need one. The big question is, does Gordon Strachan keep both his strikers on, as well as taking on Samaras? He hasn't done that yet this season. It'll be interesting to see if it's just like for like to stay with that 4-4-2. I think he's got a gamble. Nagidi's cross, and he's in there. McDonald. But he said he wanted to carry on. Whether he will be able to now, I'm not so sure. Well, I think at this point, the goalkeeper's going to have to make that decision. There's still big games to be played. It's been made. Neil Alexander is about to make his SPL debut. He did play against Hibs in the Scottish Cup when uh, McGregor was suspended. Well, he goes down very quickly, but I think Scott McDonald virtually shows him here. You can see the angle of his body. You know he's going to go to the goalkeeper's left. And McGregor knew it. There's so many vital games left for Rangers in, well, every competition. This is a real concern. Alan McGregor. And the, we hear the... We hear the Rangers doctor has been hit by something, sadly. But, uh, well, McGregor looks like he's going to go off, but he has made, as usual, another colossal contribution to the Rangers' cause, saving that penalty. McGregor's game would appear to be over. Rangers will be hoping his season isn't over. delay and maybe McGregor has said that he doesn't want to go off again <laughs> he's been saying it for about the last 15 minutes that's not exactly the kind of game that you want your second choice goalkeeper coming on in certainly when your first choice has just made a save like that from a penalty but he is going to carry on coin thrown there, which uh, certainly made contact, and that's always shameful to see. Hop along McGregor, he's going to carry on, but he's not going to take the kicks, <laughs> maybe he shouldn't have been anyway. Georgios Samaras is going to come on for Barry Robson. Game over for Robson. And uh, on comes Samaras. Celtic will be hoping that he 
can make another contribution on the goal scoring fund. He's made a few since joining on loan from Manchester City. And Gordon Strachan has gambled for the first time this season. He's gone three. Here is Samaras. And Vinicora has a link. Not the uh, quickest. And Stephen Whittaker was able to get back. McDonald, who will be eager to make amends for failing to score from the spot. We saw that we've got a tighter midfield three. Giddy just coming in a little bit, picking up the ball there. Samaras is floating around. The two strikers up front. Something will be uh, eager to find out how McGregor copes. They might be piling on top of him soon. He's got a free kick now. Well, we would expect a few long high balls right on top of McGregor now. Although he's saying now he can't continue. It's been a bit of a long drawn out saga, but surely they've got to bring Neil Alexander on. Another chance for Celtic. Nakamura takes it. Nakamura has something on the header, but uh, now he has to chase Ferguson. Glasserville is on his own, and Mark Wilson having to come across. That certainly helps when you've got a full back like Mark Wilson with pace covering for you I think having been strapped up a little bit they wanted to give McGregor a chance but it hasn't worked well he uh, had the chance to go off stayed on and saved the penalty yep that pretty much sums up Alan McGregor's season but he is making way now a crucial Vital save from Scott McDonald's penalty. Yeah, it was a vital stop. And all credit to him, he got down. Strong left arm. He touches on the post. It's a big miss for Scott McDonald. SPL debut then for Neil Alexander, who played in Scotland before for Livingston. Had some successful times there. Headed to Wales and Cardiff, and then to England and Ipswich. Now he's back north of the border, and he's playing in an old firm game. It's certainly not what Rangers want. To be down to a 4-4-1, but it doesn't really change it too much for them. They can just dig in. We know they can defend well with that back four. But they'll have to be prepared for an onslaught now. Celtic need to ask questions of the ten men. Called well in, Benagora Hesseling. He went behind and away from Samaras, but here is Wilson. Magidi, Nakamura, Hinkle. Hinkle's cross, cleared by Whitaker. Stephen Davis. Turnover. Carlos Coela sent off for handling on the line and denying Celtic a goal. And it turned out to be just about worth it. And Scott McDonald's penalty was saved by McGregor. Neil Alexander has to come for that. Samaras challenging him. The United and Hibs are chasing a place in Europe and we'll be with them Sunday at 1 on Satanta Sports 1. Just over 10 minutes remaining. It's been another gripping encounter in this famous fixture. Corba. 
Nakamura. Caldwell now for Nagidi. Stopped by Daly, but it's going to come to Wilson. And he rode the challenge for Pritika and settles for a corner. Celtic gagging for a goal. Nakamura. And it was attacked by Stephen McManus. Goal kick. Well, Rangers still very difficult to break down. Two banks of four in front of Alexander. And they know exactly what to do. If it stays like this, the gap at the top will stay the same. Four points. Celtic play Aberdeen here at the weekend. Rangers have a Scottish Cup semi against St Johnston. So uh, they will uh, rack up another game in hand over their Glasgow rivals. They've still got to rearrange matches at St Mirren and Motherwell. Walter Smith making it hard for the... SPL fixtures people by progressing in Europe and in the Scottish Cup. Kuzan's going to be on the last fling. Samaras. Caldwell. Offside. Surely not Nakamura. Surely not. Well, definitely not. I think McDonald though. What should he be? Is it going into McDonald's area? Well, he gets close to it. That's what tilts it against Nakamura. Nashville's about to be replaced by Kuzan. And McManus taking no prisoners. And why should you in games like these? The Rangers fans are down in that corner. Adoring Nacho Novo. transfer window and he's recently returned from a broken jaw suffered against Werder Bremen and turnover G'ing up the Rangers fans I think they're fairly G'd up anyway even more so the goal goes in here Rangers not committing too many men forward. Novo's corner didn't reach anyone. Ferguson rattles it back in. Only two of the last 26 Old Firm games have been drawn. Celtic really cannot afford to draw. They have no room for error, no margin at all. Three points are a must. And here they go looking for them. Nagidi, Samaras charging in. Oh yeah, again, it's Nagidi. He nips inside. Samaras just can't get his head to it. It's a lovely ball in again. Just can't make the contact, Samaras. Just over five minutes to go. Picked on by Kuzan for Novo. Novo, he had a look up and saw absolutely no one in the box. 
So the throw will do. Yeah, and credit to Rangers. Having got a man down, they haven't looked too troubled. like this, some result for Rangers very poor in the first half came out strongly in the second scored a great goal they've had to defend against us then Celtic have won 13 games in the last 5 minutes of matches under Gordon Strachan time to do it again if they are to keep their title hopes alive Hartley Away by Whitaker, but only to Samaras. Blocked by Daly. Bikini! No crafty curler this time. That's a difficult effort. Samaras is a goal with his left foot first. Doesn't give Bikini much time to think about it. Ferguson, Novo, cross came Nagidi, the well, Rangers are a team that we've seen so often this season, when they're up against it, they come good, if Celtic can't get in behind them, it's looking pretty easy for them to see this game out, full pass from Stephen Davis, we have enough of those words, much, Samaras heading nowhere fast. And Kenny Clark having to separate Samaras and Ferguson. Samaras thought he was fouled, and Ferguson <laughs> very evidently disagreed. Ferguson was angry that he thought Samaras played for the free kick here. He's running it out. A poor touch just at the end there. And then, as you can see, just let himself go, and that's what Ferguson was unhappy about. Two minutes of the 90 left. There might well be a fair few minutes added on. McGregor was down for a, a long time. Kuzan, Davis, Nova closing in on Wilson, Whittinger closing in on McGeady, Caldwell, and Celtic save their season. Hinkle. Wilson, McGeady, Wilson can deliver, McCulloch was guarding Hinkle, Caldwell, McDonald closely watched by Davis, Caldwell, Scott McDonald isn't going to get to that, and it's slipping away from Celtic. Gordon Strachan may stop the run of four defeats in four against Walter Smith, but only with a point, and that's not enough really. But there's going to be, wait for this, five minutes of stoppage time. 
just to add to the considerable tension, the intense suspense of an old firm game. Well, how often have you seen this? How difficult it is to play against ten men. There are the five minutes. That's how long Celtic have got to keep their season alive. Samaras, and that's going to drop for Alexander. Gordon Strachan won the title in his first two seasons in charge, a couple of cups as well. Progress in the Champions League, but Walter Smith has totally transformed Rangers, who went two seasons without a trophy, and now they're getting greedy. They're after four, as the seconds tick agonisingly away for those in green and white. And 1-1 would undoubtedly be job done for Rangers under very difficult circumstances. McGinney's clearance only goes to Ferguson. Now Tapac. Boric will claim that. He's rolled it to Hinkle. Samaras. Celtic. Masters of a late goal or two under Gordon Strachan. They need another one now. Wilson, it's gone behind though. I think McGeady made the wrong decision. He played in Wilson, I think he should have cut inside himself. Knowing he has better delivery when he does that. And that's been the problem for Celtic in the last 15 minutes. They can't deliver. They can't get into positions that are difficult for Rangers to defend against and then get good delivery in the box Kuzan's flip Merovo loses out to Wilson Nagini and Novo has thrown the ball away and Nagini's having a little pop It's got a little bit touchy. Something might have done the same, and it'd be the other way around, mind you. Rangers don't need to win it. Celtic most definitely do. Wilson for Samaras. Caldwell. McDonald, Fenegor of Hesselink! They've done it! Jan Fenegor of Hesselink answers the Celtic SOS! Save our season! They are still in the title race! And yet again, it's a case of better late than never under Gordon Strachan, who looks like he's going to get the better of Walter Smith. seen never with Celtic what a lovely dig pass this is from Caldwell and McDonald finds himself a yard it's a great header and that is a priceless header from Jan Fenegor of Hesselink great teamwork in the box between the front two and that's why they've scored so many goals this season no chance for Alexander but it's all about the quality of that pass the first time they've managed to get any kind of quality in the box in the last 15 minutes and look what happens. A stoppage time winner for Celtic. Mm. That sounds familiar. One minute, up to five added on remaining. Here's Kuzan though. Can Celtic close it out? Kuzan. Whitaker. Well, that's his real character, isn't it? How often have Celtic done this? Left it late, they kept trying, trying to be adventurous, very difficult against a solid Rangers side, but that's a, such a big goal for the big Dutchman. Kuzan was, was held then by uh, Vinegora Hesseling a little. Rangers fans had a moan and a groan. 
a free kick now. And there's a card coming out here for David Weir. Well, Gordon Strachan did gamble, and we thought for a second that Jan Federov Hessen would come off the park when Samaras went on. And that gamble has definitely, most definitely, paid off. Venegor and Hesselink has bailed out his strike partner, Scott McDonald, whose penalty was saved by Alan McGregor. A matter of seconds remaining. And everyone has gone through every emotion tonight. Scrap here in the aftermath, and Kenny Clark's going to have to sort this out. And it's all kicking off now. And I wonder if there might be more cards coming after the full-time whistle. What a night where Carlos Coelho got a red card, Stephen Naismith with a sub, and even he got booked. And everyone's trying to calm it down. Good luck, because emotions run high and passions run high on Derby Day in Glasgow. And yet again, Celtic have scored a late, 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 late winner. And it has just about kept them in with a shout of catching Rangers. They've still got a lot to do, make no mistake about that. But they needed to win this game, and they did. 14 times now under Gordon Strachan, Celtic have won games in the last minutes of matches and Scott McDonald who had his penalty save was rather relieved when Jan Venegor and Hesseling headed home after McDonald had set him up. Yet another epic old firm encounter. A quite extraordinary evening in Glasgow's East End. We'll be talking about this one until the next old firm game on Sunday week. Nakamura stepped up to the plate to an old firm goal. What a goal! Moving big time. But Nacho Nova came off the bench and he always scores in old firm games, it seems. A big game player, a big game scorer. But then right at the end, McDonald for Venegora Hesseling. And that was after McDonald's penalty had been saved by Alan McGregor, who went off injured. Gordon Strachan. Still in there, hanging in there grimly in the race for the SPL title. A breathtaking old firm game ends. Celtic 2, Rangers 1. A big goal from a big name striker. Celtic season has been saved in stoppage time. They haven't yet given up on an unlikely title comeback. Plenty to talk about when we return. Don't take your eye off the ball. Clydesdale Bank, always on the ball. The months and months of waiting for the big fight almost over live from Las Vegas, Joe Calzaghe against Bernard Hopkins. The build-up starts 10.30. Saturday night, Satanta Sports won one of the biggest grudge matches in boxing history. One of the biggest grudge matches in football is the old firm game. Celtic and Rangers went toe to toe tonight in the east end of Glasgow. It was must win for Celtic and it showed in the early exchanges. Cool it, says Gordon Strachan. Easier said than done in this fixture. Jan Benneker of Hesling had a chance there. He got a better touch on the ball, almost in. Great pass from Gary Caldwell to pick out Shunsky Nakamura. And that swerving left footer did the rest. Celtic ahead, no chance for Alan McGregor. Celebrations at the other end of the pitch. Scott McDonald's cross shot produced that stop from the Rangers keeper as Celtic threatened to go further ahead. Rangers had very little in attack in the first half. That block from McManus on Darshville, one of Rangers' few ventures into opposition territory. Nacho Nova on at half-time, he didn't take long to have an impact, his sixth old firm goal. And Walter Smith was up off his seat 
as Rangers squared it. Nakamura's shot, touched onto the crossbar, not by McGregor, but by Cuellar. That's a penalty, and that's a red card. Rangers down to 10 men, the player of the season, off. What could injured McGregor do? Well, he could touch Scott McDonald's penalty onto the post. Massive frustration for the Celtic fans all around the ground, and shortly it was the end of the game for McGregor. It wasn't the end of the game for Celtic, though, as Scott McDonald set up Jan Wenigan of Hesselink, and Gordon Strachan had come out on top against Walter Smith for the first time in an Old Firm match. And that means this in the claim for Celtic and for you, of course, you must be feeling particularly pleased with that result. I think the result was uh, very good for us. If you look at it, how it goes, uh, one in front, you think you have it under control and they, out of the blue, they score a goal. And then in the last minute, you score a goal and that's great for, for us as a team and as a support for the supporters. I guess looking at the balance of play, you must feel like you deserve to win that match because particularly in the first half, Celtic were in so much control of the match. It was uh, the same like Ibrox, I think, uh, when we played over there. It was the same game, but uh, it didn't go for us. And uh, today uh, you have maybe also a little bit of luck in the end, but um, I think we deserve to win. And uh, it's, it's a great compliment to all the boys that we stuck in there and uh, scored the goal in a uh, dying minute. What were you thinking when Scott McDonald missed his penalty in the second half? Uh, go on and try to score another one because they played with 10 men and uh, you hope that you can force something and, uh, and it happened and uh, it wasn't, uh, how do you say it, it uh, wasn't the very last minute but uh, it can be sweeter. What do you think this result means in terms of the title race? I think this is a very important win for us, I think it gives us a boost also and um, the gap is still there but um, um, I think they Looking there, looking in their backs a little bit right now, and feel the pressure a little bit, and that's good for us. Pl still, plenty of work for Celtic to do now, but I guess your dressing room will be feeling a lot happier after tonight's result that you have a chance to come back and, and maybe win the title finally. Yeah, for sure, it gives us a boost, especially also because uh, the last games against them uh, wasn't uh, the best, and uh, now we win uh, at home and. Uh, we have a quick game in, in a week and a half, I think, also again against them. So uh, looking forward to that also and uh, hope to keep the pressure up. And that's what we do and uh, we, uh, we can build from that. Jan, well done tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. The old firm game, of course, doesn't necessarily end uh, when the final whistle goes. And there was uh, lots of drama tonight as the players left the pitch. Here's the moment where the final whistle blew. The initial confrontation is between the two captains, Ferguson and McManus, Scotland teammates, pretty good pals as well. And then Caldwell and Weir got themselves involved as well. There you see them tangling on the, on the right of frame, tempers freeing as this match came to an end. Look at the expression on Davy Weir's face, usually the calmest of characters, tangling with his Scotland defensive colleague Gary Caldwell after that initial jousting between Ferguson and McManus and uh, I think Kenny Clark would have needed the assistance of about a dozen officials to have kept all that at bay but uh, that's the way it all came to a conclusion here tonight what a match uh, so many talking points and of course the battle for this is not yet over yes of course Rangers are still odds on with the bookies to take the title they've got plenty of matches to play plenty of points available to them but Celtic have just signalled their intent tonight they don't reckon the fight for this trophy is yet over with me in the studio at Celtic Park Terry Butcher and Craig Burley uh, where do we, get, do we begin with that one Craig? Well I think we begin by saying Celtic deserve to win the game they were the better side uh, Rangers were better in the second half were stuffy Celtic missed the penalty the crowd thought it was all over for them another late winner for them keeps this SPL title race boiling I mean it, it at least keeps them in it they did play the better football we expected that and we expected Rangers to be to be stuffy and be solid. They were. Uh, they lost Quellar, obviously, which was a blow to them. Didn't affect them too much because they were sitting in deep anyway. They lost their goalkeeper as well. Uh, they all feel a little bit unlucky and aggrieved, but in the end, Celtic were the better side today and needed it more. And I think that shone through in the end. What we can add into the equation, Terry, as well as the fact that Celtic have won this tonight, given themselves a big psychological boost, <coughs> they can go top of the league at the weekend. Rangers are going to be without injured Alan McGregor, clearly, maybe for a few weeks, depending on the seriousness and the severity of the ankle injury. Carlos Cuero will be suspended. 
Yes, and uh, a tough European match coming next week as well as a, a semi-final on Sunday, and then back here for the next instalment. So there's big games coming up, and you know you don't like to lose McGregor, who's been fantastic for Rangers all season. Alexander's got a, you know, there's there's a big call on him now coming in. Um, it looks a pretty serious one with uh, with the uh, with, with with Alan with his ankle. So you know we we'll have to wait and see you know what the uh, situation is with that, but. I thought Rangers start the second half really well. You know, I thought they pushed the two wider men further forward and in. Uh, that gave Celtic a few problems. Rangers passed the ball better second half. And you could just sense with the crowd in front of us and in the stadium with with, with the Celtic crowd that they were just you know they, they they were worried. Then Novo pops up and scores. Now we've got a game on. But then Celtic got themselves back in the game. And then you just think, well, you know, they had three men up front. He didn't know where the three men was actually going to play. And they just played all over the place, higgledy piggledy, one coming short, one going long. And you thought they'd run out of ideas. And then they produce a wonderful goal. Now Scott McDonald Donald's head could have dropped after missing the penalty, uh, but it didn't because he outmuscles uh, uh, Whitaker. Whitaker in the far post. Perfect header, of course, and of course, um, Vinegar Hesselink can't miss from there. And we were just saying, Rob, just quickly, that Vinegar Hesselink was actually quite lucky to still be on the pitch because he hadn't really did anything. You wondered about the wisdom of putting a third striker on and just getting in the way of each other and taking Robson, who was having a good match off, and I don't think the crowd, the crowd didn't agree with it. Plenty of burn going round here, but... It it's good idea it's it's proved, it's proved, on. <laughs> it's proved the right decision because he wasn't going to miss from there and it's been a massive massive three points for Celtic tonight a blow for Rangers but they've still they've still got it in their hand if they win their games and all the games they've got to play then they will win this league title but Celtic have just made it a little bit more difficult for them yeah let's get the assessment of the Rangers manager Walter Smith here he is Walter I imagine that must be a bitter pill to swallow to lose the game in that manner um, yes, obviously, it's so late in the game. I mean, we obviously were holding out and thought we were going to get a point that um, would have been a good one for us under the circumstances. We uh, we don't start the game very well. Celtic were a better side in the first half of the game um, and deserved a lead. Uh, but credit to our own boys who came back and played far better the second half. And I felt when we equalised, you know, we were on the ascendancy. But then, um, you know, the circumstances of the game change, obviously, when we, we get someone sent off. and. Uh, and that was uh, a time when we had to defend. We did so brilliantly um, up until to start last few seconds. You must have had plenty to speak about at half time because Rangers hadn't really contributed a huge amount in the game. What did you what did you focus on because it was a, a different Rangers in the second half? Well, we had to impose ourselves on the game, regardless of, of, of how you play or how you set a game out tactically. You must try and impose yourself on the game a bit better than we did in the first half. Celtic did that, uh, did it very well in the first half. So, um, you know, we had to, to go and show that we could do that in a second. We did that, um, you know, and we had easily our best spell of the game for the 20 minutes after half time. I guess your players will be feeling desperately disappointed having put so much into the game, the effort that they showed, particularly in the second half when they were down to 10 men. Well, they have done. I mean, even though Celtic was the, the better side in the, in the first half of the game, there wasn't many opportunities. Where we defend very well. I mean, I must admit credit to our own boys to do that, regardless of the circumstances. And the pressure that was created was mainly from, from set plays. So, uh, you know, from our own point of view, obviously disappointed to lose that goal, but, uh, you know, a far better effort from us in the second half. Do you think the sending off was crucial, given that you were maybe short of a body in the box in the dying minutes of the game? Well, uh, I mean, we, we have a situation where we were well covered height-wise, and uh, we looked, apart from you know the obvious set piece areas where everyone's crowding in, we managed to handle them all night. We were handling the crosses um, well, but having uh, losing a centre half definitely causes you a bit of problem. Carlos has a good presence in the box and, and wins a lot of balls for us, but. Um, you know, when you're under that pressure, we've only got ten men, and then they come they come down on top of us, and, and different spells during that, that last period, and uh, when a ball comes in, it gets knocked on like that. You know, it's always liable to happen. In the big bigger picture, you still have a lead and games in hand, so I guess plenty to play for. But you you'll still feel that you're in a, a fairly comfortable position. Well, I don't think you ever feel you're in that much of a comfortable position, regardless of uh, of what happens. Um, our situation, I think, is fairly simple. It's a, it's one where you know we'll be under a little bit of pressure, depending on, on the league ruling of uh, when they make us um, play our games. That's going to have a, a, an influence on the outcome of the championship this year. I have no doubt about that. Thanks for your time, Walter. Thank you. Walter Smith has haunted Gordon Strachan since returning to Rangers, and deep into stoppage time, it looked as if he would continue his winning run against Celtic, but no, right at the death. Gordon Strachan finally broke the spell. We'll hear from him next. Given up in their defence of this trophy beside me. Terry Butcher and Craig Burley with me in the studio watching the compulsive viewing tonight. I'd like to look back on some of the key moments of the match. And right 
Gone for most of the second half. It looked like a case of deja vu, but finally the result to go with the performance tonight. I think both were there tonight as a result that I think we deserved. Well, I know we deserved the, the result, but uh, the football gods have not been kind to us uh, recently. And uh, But uh, I thought we played very well tonight. We had a wee spell at the start of the second half. It was a bit dodgy. We were expecting Rangers to react uh, to the first half, and they did. As they have done all year. And uh, that's my phone. Um, as they have done all year, and, and it's great to be a Rangers team that's it's been so consistent, so professional, and, and, and doing so well this year. Chances created for Celtic once again, and missed once again. Were you worried that it wasn't going to be your night? Yeah, especially when you get a penalty, and you can't even score from there. Um, so it says a lot for the lads to take the body blows that they had, and to come back and, and win. Uh, but I think, it's, it's, I think over the two games we played against them recently, I think it was only deserved. The first goal in these games is so crucial. You got it tonight. When you came in at half-time, having played so well, you must have been feeling comfortable in the game. No, I would like to another goal, and it was proved right. And uh, we had, you know, had enough pressure, set plays, and build-up was good to get that other goal. But we just we couldn't make it. Um, Lottie was down to fantastic individual defending with Rangers, and they did well. But uh, we thought we could have scored another one. So it was, it was still worrying, and I was, I was correct to worry because they got an equaliser. I imagine after such a significant win, you must have quite a buoyant dressing room. They're all right, um, and, but it was, it's just nice to win an old firm game. I, I think that the permutations that go after that, it's, it's got nothing to do with how we feel in the dressing room. It's just the fact that we, we won and, uh, and we put in a good performance. And the bigger picture is it does apply a bit of pressure on Rangers. They've, they've, they've still got, got a, a sense of points and games in hand, but you're, you're putting pressure on them. It's, it's, it's all we can do, and uh, as I said, that they've been handling pressure quite well this year in big games. And um, but we are now looking like we can score goals again, which is good, and it helps us to just make the, the end of the season more exciting. Thanks for your time. Well done tonight. Thank you. Ta. Let's get another view on what happened here tonight in this third Old Firm match of the season. Jim Delant has Jerry McNee with him down at pitch level looking at the stories from tonight's game that are going to make tomorrow morning's headlines. Jim. Thanks very much, Rob. Jerry McNee watched that game with me at Celtic Park. Jerry, we still have a title race. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it's certainly a reprieve for Celtic tonight. Uh, I don't think it's any more than that. Rangers are still in the driving seat. I said to you beforehand, I thought Celtic must, uh, might just nick this one uh, and uh, they left it rather late. But, you know, there are still things with Celtic that aren't right and uh, I don't think uh, the crowd will be happy tonight, but they know there are still problems to be overcome. I think too, Jim, when you've lost four in the bounce, you haven't scored a goal, you're on your own patch. You know, uh, you owe it to your supporters. If you get any pride at all, you turn in a performance. It's hard to say, you know, were Celtic that good in the first half? Or was it Rangers defending far too deeply? Well, I think the answer to